Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the Federal Reserve and the um, raising of interest rates. What I find pretty interesting is that when you go to the news and you start finding these articles where they have interviewed these members from the Federal Reserve, it's pretty interesting to hear some of the things that they are saying, especially when it comes to the... Um, Kind of like the usual suspects that you see coming from the Federal Reserve. Um, people like James Bullard and Loretta Mester, you find them in the news pretty regularly. Like they do a lot of interviews with the mainstream media. And some of the quotes that are coming from these two really kind of sets the stage for what you feel the Federal Reserve is going to be doing. Now, some of these comments that they had... Um, Let's see, where was one of them here that I was reading? Okay, if inflation continues to come down, I think we'll be fine. This is James Bullard. Our risk now is inflation doesn't come down and accelerates, right? Or re-accelerates. And then what do you do? We are going to have to react. And if inflation doesn't start to come down, you know, you risk this replay of the 1970s. And you don't want to get into that. Let's be sharp now. Let's get inflation under control in 2023. And he goes on to say up here earlier, he says, It has become popular to say, let's slow down and feel our way to where we need to be. Um, get to the level and then feel your way around to see what you need to do. You know, when you're there, when the next, you, you'll know when you're there, when the next move could be up or down. So it's pretty interesting to listen to him talk because pretty much what he is saying <clears throat> when you listen to James Bullard is he doesn't really give a really good, clear idea on what it is that he feels, except that he feels that they need to be more aggressive. And now a lot of times you'll hear him talk and they say that, you know, there needs to be a quarter point hike or a half a point, you know, hike or something like that in order to combat the inflation. And when you're hearing James Bullard say this, you really think, OK, well, this is what the Federal Reserve is feeling that they need to do. A lot of the same things come from Loretta Mester. You know, um, let me see if I can find some of the quotes. The participants favoring. Here we go. The participants favoring a 50 point base. 50, 50 basis point increase noted that a larger increase would more quickly bring the target range close to the levels they believed would be would achieve a sufficient restrictive stance, taking into account their views of the risk to achieving price stability in a timely way. So it sounds to me like they are more concerned about getting the interest getting the interest rates up to combat the inflation than they are about what the damage could do from the inflation, right? They think it's more damaging to not react than it would be to react too late. And at least that's kind of the idea that I got from it. Um, let me see, where else was it? Uh, let's see. What, uh, participants observed that the uncertainty associated with their outlooks for economic activity, the labor market and inflation was high. Um, so I don't know, when you listen to these people talk, especially when it comes to Loretta Mester and James Bullard, is that they seem to be very aggressive. Like, they are very hawkish when it comes to a Federal Reserve stance. The only thing I find interesting is that neither one of those two are voting members on the FOMC. Like, they don't vote on where monetary policy should go. Now, they can give their opinions and they can, you know hang out with them, but they're not voting members. So it doesn't really matter what these two think. I mean, sure, it's important and they have insight, but they're not voting members of the FOMC. And so regardless of what they say to the news, they're not the ones voting, right? Um, one of the things that you hear from the Federal Reserve is that they're trying to bring like the demand down. Right. That's the whole point of the of the raising of the interest rates is to bring the demand down to meet the supply. Like, you know, when you have this overwhelming demand and a supply chain shortage or supply chain breakdown, that leaves this huge gap. And this is where the inflation comes in, is that there's more demand than there is supply. So they're bringing the demand down to meet the supply. The only problem with what they are doing is that they are trying to hurt the consumer. They are basically saying to the manufacturers, the distributors, the retailers out there, hey, we're going to punish the very person that you need to do business, the consumer, right? So we're going to bring the consumer down. Sorry, supply chain, but you're going to have to continue on doing what you're doing in order to bring the supply up to meet the lack of the demand that we are trying to push into the economy. Okay? 
But if you're a supplier, why would you do that? If you're a manufacturer, distributor, wholesaler, retailer, whatever it is you're dealing with, why would you invest more into a, in an economy where the demand, where the, the consumer, the demand is not going to be there or is getting punished? You, you simply wouldn't do it. In fact, during a time when there was shortages and a shortage of everything, including like truck drivers, the demand for truck drivers was through the roof. I mean, super high pay, right? These ungodly pays that they were offering truck drivers. They were, everybody had retired, so they were like, you know, trying to find people to go to school. There was all kinds of investment going into trucking. They were trying to figure out how it is in California that they could get the National Guard involved with trucking. Remember how much demand there was for it? Well, take a look at the article that I leave down in the description. Some of these owner operators are now closing up shop. They're done. They just can't do it anymore. The the need for their for them in all their efforts and all their business is just not there anymore. Not in a profitable way. And so they're going out of business. This is something that I said was going to take place. I mean, if you have the exact person that you need in order to do business getting punished, that's punishing you. That's the punishing the supply side. So as they're bringing the demand down, they're also bringing the supply down and with it. Eventually, both of these will find their bottom, but it's going to be somewhere into the future. And if they continue with their campaign of keeping interest rates elevated, which I'm sure they're going to, they are not going to solve the problem of bringing the supply up to meet the demand. All right. So how long does this continue on for until everybody starts feeling the new normal? Right? Once they start feeling the new normal, then they're like, well, this is it. This is the way we're going to have to you know, operate and do business. And that's when things will start to pick up again. But it won't happen until both of these find their bottom. And we're still on our way down. Right? They're still trying to keep the interest rates elevated. And that's going to be, burden, that's going to be a burden on the consumer. And if there's a burden on the consumer, it's going to put a burden on the supply chain. And that's going to continue on. There's no, I don't see how that's going to change. Now, when we look over at China, take a look at the article I leave down there. China has been a manufacturing powerhouse going on like 30 years now, right? They started off with like the absolute cheap labor in the world and everybody sent their manufacturing over to China. Well, as China become a manufacturer, what happens? Well, they're exporting a lot of their manufactured goods, which means a lot of new money is coming into their country. And if you take a look at the labor that has taken place or the, the cost of labor in China, it has moved up dramatically. And now what's happening? Manufacturing is now finding its way out of China into other nations that are cheaper labor. Right? It's very similar to what happened in the United States. I think China is going to end up experiencing something very much like that. United States used to be a manufacturing powerhouse, right? We produced more stuff and lent more money to the world than anybody else. Now we borrow more and buy more from anybody in the history of the world, right? And so this is what happens when you become a manufacturing powerhouse. You start distributing all this stuff out to the world. The world sends you their money. You get this new money. You start enjoying that standard of living. As your standard of living increases, you start importing more foreign production. As you're importing more foreign production, you export more domestic manufacturing. China's going to find that whole thing start to take place if they don't do something drastically with it. And mainly, they're going to have to figure out a way to either keep the, the manufacturing going or to prevent the people from increasing their standard of living. Neither one of those things are going to go over very well, at least not in my opinion. So take a look at some of the things that are happening here. When it comes to the FOMC... You know, and the, the Federal Open Market Committee and the voting members on our monetary policy, it's not everybody at the Federal Reserve. And when you hear things coming from Loretta Mester and James Bullard, I'm not saying that it's not stuff that you shouldn't listen to. I mean, it's definitely stuff that's important. But they're just out there making noise. They're not voters. Right? They, they're just out there putting the narrative out there for you guys to, to pick up on. <clears throat> but is it? The actual way that they vote or would vote doesn't really matter because they're not voting members at this point. Um, what else did I want to bring up in this? So I got China, talked about the trucking, talked about the FOMC. I think I got this one. All right. Uneducated economists, I'll leave links down in the description for you. Let me know.